Let's say you have a device that uses multiple stepper motors. It could be a 3D printer, a CNC machine, a robot arm, or something else. It could have from three to a dozen or more stepper motors. Each motor is controlled by a driver, and each driver needs power. Normally, you'd want to power them all from a single supply, but how big does that supply need to be? How many volts? How many amps? How many watts? This is something many people struggle with, and they often end up using a supply that's far bigger than really needed. Whilst this will work just fine, a bigger power supply will cost more money and take up more space, both of which might be major considerations for your design. Here's how I might try and work it out. The voltage is the easy part. It's written on the driver. Anything from 9 to 42 volts. More is usually better, since it allows the motor to spin faster with more torque, but it's important not to go too close to the maximum. A small safety margin is needed, since in some situations, such as decelerating a large load, the motor can act as a generator, pushing power back to the driver and raising the supply voltage. Exceeding the maximum voltage could cause the driver to shut down. Since power supplies often have voltages in multiples of 12 volts, a 36 volt supply seems like a good choice here. Let's say I have four of these stepper motors, which are rated at 2.8 amps. Now you probably know stepper motors have two phases, each of which can draw the rated current. So is that 2.8 amps for the whole motor, or 2.8 for each phase, making 5.6 amps total? Let's say it's 2.8 for each phase to be on the safe side. This is already adding up to a lot. But since I'm not sure about this, let's multiply everything by a safety factor of say 20%, just to be sure. So altogether that's 26.88 amps. Power supplies seem to have outputs in multiples of 5 amps, so the nearest will probably be a 30 amp supply. Multiply that by the 36 volts gives a grand total of 1.21 gigawatts. Why can't I find one that size? I only want to power four little motors. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> Let's approach this a different way. I have this 24 volt power supply that's rated at 5 amps. Surely that should power one 2.8 amp motor. I'm going to connect the driver and motor to this and measure how much current it actually draws under different conditions. I also have these two ammeters, which I'll put in series with each phase. I put together a quick circuit, which allows me to send a single step pulse by pushing this button or send a train of pulses at any frequency I like by turning this potentiometer. This is connected to the step pulse input of the driver. So what happens when I turn everything on? Each phase appears to be drawing exactly one amp, making two amps total. I actually have the driver set to 2.8 amps, but perhaps the lower value is due to some power saving feature where the full current is only applied for a fraction of a second. Anyway, one amp per phase is a nice round number, so I'm going to stick with this setting. Now to answer the question that seems to confuse most people. Is the rated current drawn by the whole motor, or by each phase at the same time, making it twice that for the whole motor? To answer this, I'm going to step through one whole step cycle, a single pulse at a time, and record the current of each phase at every point. I have the driver set to four times microstepping, so that should be 16 pulses for one entire cycle. At the start, 
the current in both phases is 1 amp, which adds up to 2 amps total. Now if I make a single step, we can see the current in phase A has decreased to half an amp, whilst in phase B it has increased to 1.5 amps, still 2 amps total. Now if I make another step, the current in phase A has decreased to zero, whilst in phase B it's still 1.5 amps, making a total now of 1.5 amps. But wait, let's take a closer look at that. Phase B was not constantly at 1.5 amps. The needle jumped, indicating that a higher current was applied for a fraction of a second, perhaps at the peak current indicated on the driver. But it happened so fast, this meter can't react, so we just see a blip. Next step. Phase A has now decreased to minus half an amp. Phase B is still at 1.5 amps. Step 4. Now phase A reads minus 1 amp, and phase B reads plus 1 amp. This still adds up to 2 amps total, not 0 amps. The negative reading just means the current is now flowing in the other direction but there's still one amp passing through each winding, which adds up to two amps total. This is why it's called a bipolar motor. Current flows in both directions, not just one way. Step five. A goes down to minus 1.5. B goes down to 0 0.5. Six. Seven. Eight. Now we're halfway around the step cycle and the current in both phases is minus one amp, the opposite of where we started. As we continue, a pattern emerges. Each value is now the inverse of what it was eight steps before. At the 16th step, we are now back where we started and the cycle repeats from here on. Let's see what those values look like plotted on a graph. We can see the voltage applied to each phase approximates a sine wave, with one phase leading the other by a quarter cycle. If I run the motor at a low speed, we can see the needles oscillate regularly back and forth. You might recognize this waveform. It looks very similar to that of an induction motor. A stepper motor is not much different. It just moves in discrete steps. If I add on the root mean square value of both phases, this gives the total current being drawn. In reality, it probably looks more like this with the peak current spikes, but we can see the average current is two amps or less. So in short, to answer the question about the current, the motor should never draw more than the peak current the driver is set to. That's in total for both phases. Each phase can draw up to the maximum current on its own when the other phase is off. Or they can share the current between them. But it never exceeds the peak value in total. Note that this applies to modern bipolar stepper motor drivers. There are other ways of driving stepper motors where the maximum current can be applied to all the windings simultaneously. But this is rarely done nowadays. Anyway, this means our original estimated power requirement is now cut in half. So, if the motor draws 2 amps from the driver, and the driver gets its power from the power supply, then surely the driver must draw at least 2 amps from the power supply, right? I'll put an ammeter here and measure it. Just a quarter of an amp. And yes, I still have two amps over here. How is that possible? Is this some kind of magic free energy perpetual motion driver? Able to output eight times the power it takes to run? No, of course not. What we haven't considered is the voltage. Power supplies don't supply just amps or volts. They supply power. Power is amps multiplied by volts. 
We know the supply is 24 volts. 24 times a quarter of an amp is 6 watts of power. So without breaking the laws of physics, the most power the motor can consume is also 6 watts. But the voltage and current don't have to be the same, as long as their product is 6 watts or less. So how many volts is the motor? The voltage of a stepper motor is often not specified because it doesn't really have the same meaning it would for a DC motor. But the current and resistance are stated, so we can easily work it out using Ohm's law. Two point eight amps times one point one three ohms is approximately three volts. Note that the resistance is given with an error of plus or minus ten percent, so the voltage could be anything from two point eight five to three point four eight volts. But two to three volts is typical for a stepper motor of this size. So if we go back to our power calculation, we can see that two amps times three volts is equal to six watts, which is the same as the power consumption from the supply. This is how the driver can supply 2 amps to the motor whilst only drawing a quarter of an amp from the supply. But wait, if this motor and driver are only drawing a quarter of an amp from this 5 amp supply, does that mean I can run up to 20 of them off of this one supply? And if the motor is only 3 volts, why do I have to use a power supply that's up to 42 volts? And how does the driver convert the higher voltage into the lower voltage? In theory, yes, you could connect 20 motors to this 5 amp supply, but only if they never actually moved. As soon as the motor starts stepping, it starts to draw more current from the supply, whether there is a load on the motor or not. Note that the motor itself is not drawing significantly more current, but the faster it steps, the more voltage it takes to push the same current through the windings, which equates to more power and therefore more current from the supply. That's the reason we have to use a higher voltage supply, and also the reason the voltage of the motor is not stated, since that's only its DC voltage when at a standstill. This is all due to the inductance of the windings. What this means is that the motor resists any change in the electric current passing through it. As the current starts flowing, it generates a magnetic field, which in turn creates a voltage that opposes the flow of current. So when you turn on an inductor, the current doesn't start to flow immediately as it would with a purely resistive load. Instead, it gradually increases until it reaches the maximum value. The time taken for it to reach 63% of this value is known as the time constant, and this can be calculated by dividing the inductance by the resistance. Henry's divided by ohms. For this motor, the time constant is around 5 milliseconds. That might sound fast, but this motor needs 200 steps to complete one revolution, so that would limit its top speed to less than one revolution per second. But that's at the motor's rated DC voltage of 3 volts. We can reduce the time by simply increasing the voltage. Note that the time constant itself does not change. What we're actually doing is increasing the value of this 63% point. But since we don't want to reach this point, the voltage is cut off once the current has reached the desired value. This also demonstrates how the driver converts the higher voltage of the supply into the voltage required by the motor. It doesn't actually convert it at all. It just turns it on and off very quickly, and the inductance of the windings smooths these pulses out into a constant voltage. Let's look at an actual oscilloscope trace for this motor when one phase is drawing a steady 1 amp. The whole voltage of the power supply is applied to the motor and switched on and off very quickly, in this case at over 100 kHz. That's 500 times faster than the time constant of the winding. So what the motor sees is a steady voltage at a lower value. Now let's look at the trace when the winding is first turned on. Here power is applied and you can see there is a much longer pulse at the start to get the current up to the required value. After that, it goes back to a series of short pulses to maintain the set value. The faster you step the motor, the more frequently these long pulses occur, until you reach a point where the full voltage of the supply needs to be applied almost all the time. And if you go beyond that, the torque of the motor drops rapidly and it stalls. So, anyway, how much current can I get this motor to draw from the power supply? Here it's turning at a typical speed it might in use, 
around 300 RPM and it's drawing 1 amp from the supply. Remember that I have it set at 2.8 amps. What if I apply a physical load to the motor by trying to stop the shaft? The current goes up to about 1.25 amps, but I can't get it to go any higher. What if I try and spin it faster? The most this motor will do with a 24 volt supply is around 1200 RPM. If I try to go any faster it just stalls. The current increases with the RPM, but it's not completely smooth and jumps around quite a lot, especially at low speeds. Above a certain RPM the current begins to fall off quite quickly, and then the motor stalls. Above this point, the current stays constant. Here, the peak current is 1.1 amps and occurs at a speed of 400 RPM. The motor stalls around here. So what if I now try and stop the motor when it's running at this peak current? Again, it doesn't change much. The most I can get is just under 1.25 amps. Note that these values will vary depending on the motor, driver and power supply. So what would happen if I were to use a higher voltage? I can adjust the output of this supply. Though not by very much. What do you think will happen to the current as I increase the voltage? That's right, it goes down, not up. The motor still draws the same amount of power regardless, so the current and voltage balance out. If one goes up, the other must go down. So to sum up, how much power do you really need? This 2.8 amp motor draws from a quarter of an amp to 1.25 amps from a 24 volt supply. So if I wanted to run four of these, I could actually use just a five amp supply not the 30 amp one from my earlier estimate. And remember, it's very unlikely if you have four motors that they would all be running to the maximum at the same time. So you could probably get by with less. But would I actually do that in practice? For reliability, I would probably be a bit more conservative and allow the power supply some extra headroom. A figure of around half the motor's rated current seems a safe value. For a 36 volt or higher supply, you could even use a third. I would multiply this by the number of motors, and since that's unlikely to be a nice round number, I would choose the next power supply above this value. And if that's a big jump, using a different voltage might allow you to use a supply that's a better match for overall power. So bear in mind the total power, not just the minimum amps and volts. This I think is a fairly reasonable way to do it, but remember if you're using motors of a vastly different size or voltage, then results may vary.